Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Carson City today, joined by Jill Tolles. She's a new member of the Nevada State Assembly. And we both have daughters that are teenagers, uh, two daughters, both teens, and um, so we're acutely aware of the safety of our girls. Mm -hmm. I had mentioned to you, um, sadly, a friend of ours um, lost her daughter for three months, mm -hmm. um, and she lost her to sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know from what you speak mm -hmm. when we talk about sex trafficking. Tell us about your work before you got to the legislature. Well, thank you, first of all, for of sharing that story and, mm -hmm. and also bringing awareness that this can be our neighbor, it can right. be our daughter, it could be our, our sister, uh, someone that we teach at school. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something that we all need to be more aware of. And, and in many ways, I entered into this subject as a number of years ago. I served on the Task Force for Child Sexual Abuse Prevention in an interim committee. We mm -hmm. studied a very difficult topic for eight months, made a series of recommendations, and that led to, as a citizen, in the last legislative session, before I got to... You, yeah, but before yeah. you talk about that, and I want to get to your work there, Yeah. what did you learn in mm. those eight months? I mean, mm. I can't even imagine. Yeah. I mean, I know that I had always presumed those that get sex trafficked, they're from Thailand, they're from Mexico. Right. Yeah. I've learned not, and I'm sure you can tell us more. Yes, so it is a, a silent epidemic and that uh, child sexual abuse impacts one in four girls and one in six boys before the age of 18, statistically. Not, is, and, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and so what we know in the tie to sex trafficking is that research tells us that 90% of women who enter into prostitution self-report that they were sexually abused as children. And, um, and based on statistics uh, that have been verified out in Clark County, from our, our judge who has a specialty court on this issue, the average age that girls are recruited into prostitution, sex trafficking is 15 and a half. And these girls are our girls. Mm -hmm. They are our daughters, our nieces. Yeah. They're not from Thailand. They're not from Mexico. God bless them, don't get me wrong, but right. these are uh, American girls. These are Nevadans. These are Californians. Absolutely, and not just girls, too. Right. Boys can be trafficked. Transgender community is particularly right. vulnerable, so it's important to recognize that this is an issue that surrounds us. And we think about Los Angeles to Las Vegas, Sacramento right. to Reno, up and down the coast and yeah. inland. I mean, sadly, we're right in kind of the corridor right. of the sex trafficking trade. Right, we have a, a trafficking highway from the Bay Area to Sacramento to Reno, and then from LA, you said, to Las right. Vegas, to the surrounding states, Arizona and so forth. And and um, and there is a, a sex tourism industry. It and makes it's, me nauseous. It, it, it makes and, me nauseous. And it should make all of us yeah. nauseous. And and um, and it's, it's something that we don't like to talk about. It's uncomfortable, but if we can talk about this, if we can open our eyes to it, we can open our ears to it, we can uh, open up our mouths and speak up when we see things, we may be able to do something to change those trends. And there is a way for us to increase the chance we will see things. And that's yep. what you did with your bill right. before you got into the legislature. Tell right. us about that great work. It was known as SB 394, right. pre-assembly woman tolls. Right, so just yes. as a citizen, as a right. mom, and right. it's um, one of the wonderful privileges of being in Nevada is that right. you really can have a voice. Right. You can be uh, a part of the people and right, as literally. a citizen right. advocating. And so I was able to uh, help work with a, a sponsor and um, draft a, a bill that passed into law to help essentially establish content standards across the state. And so you're that being humble in because not only did it pass, it passed unanimously. Yes, it, it, did. it, it did. Jill it Toll did. has got a bill passed unanimously. <laughs> she wasn't even in the legislature yet. Right. So uh. it's, it, and essentially it's just, uh, it, it's ensuring that every child in our schools gets to hear the message that you have a right to be safe. Right. And if you're not, who to go to for help. And I have learned through interviews like this, that if something's fishy, something's probably fishy. Yes. Don't ignore the signs. Yes. If you see a 13-year-old all of a sudden wearing some really expensive jewelry, mm -hmm. really expensive purses, yeah. clothing, 
the hair has changed color, tattoos are arriving. Yes. I mean, educate me. I, You're I, I, aware, I, I, yeah. is, and, and, yeah. and kudos to you for being aware right. of the signs and um, and for communicating that message that, uh, that you know, when we see those kinds of signs, uh, it's, it's something that we need to pay attention to. And yep. call the authorities, talk right. to your teacher, talk yep. to your counselor, talk to your priest, your rabbi, who cares, just talk right. to someone. If something doesn't smell right, see right, sound right, at least speak. So yep. now you're in the legislature. Yes, sir. And am. so now you're looking to further your work in right. the area. You have a bill that you're still percolating on, right. but tell us about that. Right. So first, I want to just touch oh, on please, something please, that please. you you pointed out, and, mm. and that is to call, make a hotline. Uh, Nevada is actually number one in uh, phone calls to the National Human Trafficking Hotline oh, uh, per capita, and so that tells you how significant that problem is here. Uh, there was an independent study that was done recently. You asked about Reno, and mm -hmm. is is that a problem right. where I represent? And uh, there was a recent study just just calculating the number of ads advertising for women and children in Reno in one month's time on Backpage, there were 1,400 ads selling women and children in Reno. So it's very much alive. Uh, one of the bills, I, I'm actually mm -hmm. uh, co-sponsoring a, a bill that's gonna address uh, the, uh, the trafficking of minors. Mm -hmm. That's still in process. Mm -hmm. uh, the other bill that I, I'm further along with and working on is really addressing on the adult side, the buyer side of the equation. So as we look at sex trafficking, there's, uh, and, and I hate to put it in economic terms no, of, of, of yes. supply and demand, but you have, you have the trafficker or the, or the pimp, the seller, you have the victim, and then you have the buyer or the john. And we've done some things recently in Nevada's law to increase penalties for the trafficker, and uh, we need to keep cracking down on enforcement. Uh, we've done some with the victims. We need to do a lot more with getting them out and getting them safe. Are we still charging them? We are, and so that brings me to mm. my bill, and that is that we've done very little to um, to address the John or the buyer side of mm -hmm. the equation. Uh, in fact, the Department of Justice in 2010 reported that we had 43,000 arrests of the women, the victims, and only 19,000 arrests of the of the Johns mm -hmm. or the traffickers combined. So more than twice as many arrests of the women, and yet very very few arrests targeting so are you particularly at that? the Johns. Yes, and 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 what we have is a gender bias in the system. And no. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, if we want to tackle this issue in a holistic manner, we have got to go after the demand side of the equation, because if we address the demand then by nature, we're going to help the other efforts to help the victims and to crack down on the uh, traffickers. So what my bill specifically does is look at increasing the penalties on the Johns and then also adding in there a self-funding mechanism to take some of those fees and use them towards enforcement and even some prevention programs that we've seen um, some success in other states. Have you spoken with your friends on the other side of the aisle about this so we can get unanimous support like you did last <laughs> year? Let's hope for unanimous exactly. support again. I'd love to right. keep that track record. But, but yes, no, I mm -hmm. actually have been talking with Senator Canizero, right. who is um, a, a, an assistant DA from right. Clark County. Oh, nice. She is a Democrat in the right. Senate, and she's um, she's been wonderful to work with and, and collaborate with on this. And, and as I've talked to just everyone across the aisle right. and across both houses, right. I'm already generating a great deal mm -hmm. of support. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for what you're doing. It's yes. really important. Her name is Jill Toll. She's a new member of the Nevada State Assembly. My name is Brad Pomerantz in Carson City. It's local edition.